I'm going to show you a tool that's going to replace at least half the components in your LLM stack and let you ship twice as fast. It's vitally important to be able to iterate when building LLM apps. So testing different prompts with different models, different providers, all of this becomes surprisingly cumbersome as soon as you have multiple functions that need to call different models. On top of that, some of them fail, some of them hit rate limits that you're not expecting, and then you have to handle all these edge cases. But to do that quickly is surprisingly cumbersome. You end up managing six different APIs with six different SDKs, and then the prompts that go along with those. And on top of that, you want to track these things. You want to see what the responses are, the quality. The overhead snowballs pretty quickly. Next thing you know, you're spending half your time just creating glue code, managing retries, failures. But check this out. All of this can get replaced with one line of code. Let me show you how this open source tool that I bookmarked a while ago um, and just got back to recently solves all of this. It replaced at least a third of my code base and remove the headaches of actually managing all of these APIs. If you're building with language models, you know the drill. Your OpenAI API randomly fails, and then you want to swap it maybe with Claude. And then you have other functions that need to use Gemini, but Gemini's structured output requires a different JSON schema than the rest of the providers. And all of a sudden, you're managing all of this unneeded complexity. And not only that, you still need observability and metrics in your LLM app. You need to be able to track which models gave which responses so that you can improve your prompts over time. I spent months dealing with all of this, managing different prompt templates, trying to measure which model actually performs better for which function or which part of my LLM app. But Tensor Zero unifies all of this under one API. Let, let me show you how it works. So Tensor Zero is an application that runs alongside your main application and it just acts as an API. And what you do is, you just route all of your inference calls through Tensor Zero instead of writing the application code yourself. So instead of writing SDK calls or custom HTTP requests, all your model providers are set up through Tensor Zero and you make the requests through that. It's pretty simple. So in the quick start guide, you can just pull their Docker Compose file with a curl command. I've done that already. And that basically looks something like this. They have three services, the ClickHouse, their gateway and the UI. All your requests are going to go to the gateway service. That's what's going to route all the LLM calls. The ClickHouse is the data lake that's going to store all the information from the request. So the, you know, the prompts slash the requests responses. Now, I've just changed uh, the ports here because I use already the 3000 port for another service. But basically, the UI lets you scroll through and look at all your data and inference calls that you've made. We'll just focus on the gateway here. This is where all the inference calls get made to. Environment is self-explanatory. You just add all your LLM API keys that you want to use. Now, how does this work? Well, let's just take a quick example. In my actual application, I have this function called get year from report. And what I want to do is send a snippet of this JSON report to an LLM and ask it for extracting of some data. So in this case, I wanted to figure out what year the report is for. So typically you would do something like this, where you have a prompt and you send it to an LLM like Claude here. And this is just an example that I have of a custom SDK I've created on my local app here, but you can use anything. Now the way Tensor Zero works is that all of this gets abstracted and all you're doing is defining the functions and their prompts. And all of this gets defined in a Tensor Zero TOML. So the very first thing you need to do is just set up the models and providers you want to use. As you can see here, I've set up Claude and Anthropic, as well as GPT-40 Mini, Gemini, DeepSeek, and Mistral. And then you can define a bunch of functions. So for example, I have this one function called Extract here, which is basically the same thing that I have in this real app, but we're going to replace it. Now your function can be type text or type JSON. I went with type JSON and we define an output schema. So this is the schema that we want the LLM to return. Now there's, a, there's the file. I mean, it's simple. So my output schema is just a JSON schema with the property here, nothing, nothing special there. And now we define the variance of this function. So for every provider that I want to send this function to, it needs a block of variant. So this is sort of the syntax that, that's needed. 
and then a template. So our template is actually just a prompt. Again, very simple. I'm using the same template here for every single variant. So Mistral is going to use the same template, GPT-40 Mini, etc. But you can add different templates here for different models. And the other thing you're going to notice is a weight. I'll talk about them in a second. But for now, I have 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3 for extract here. So I only want GPT-40 Mini, DeepSeq, and Claude Sonnet to be rotated for this request. And now when you want to make requests that call this function, all we really need to do is hit the gateway inference API. And that's right here. Just a simple HTTP request. This is the host. So clearly lo locally, this is going to be local host. And it's going to be mapping to the ports that we set up in the Docker Compose. And the only really thing we need to do is send our prompt and the function name. And the only thing you really need to pass is the function name and the payload, which is our prompt. So the function name comes from, and the function name comes from the tensor zero config file that we set up. So in, in this case, it's extract year. Now I've also defined uh, a type for the response. And this you can see on the tensor zero website under their API reference. And the way we would call that is if we comment this part out, basically it would look something like this. Very simple, and this is our function name. So now if I start up the gateway, I would say docker compose up, wait for that to start. It looks like it's up, and now we can test it out. So what I'm gonna do is we'll go over here, here's my application, and we'll just drop a PDF in here. And before I do that, actually I'm gonna stop it from processing everything just so that we can see a result quickly. And that should be somewhere here, all right. We'll just throw here. And now if I do this and we go back to the, here is our response. And we can see the variant name is DeepSeek. Now, if we try this again, we'll just save here. So it resets the server. It's going to send it to a different provider that we set up. So it's either going to be Claude or GPT-4. All right, let's check that out real quick. Close that, upload the PDF, GPT-40 Mini, right? Now you can see how powerful that is. All it really involved was defining the function and then an output schema if one's required and a prompt. And also the beauty here is that we can actually have these prompts living outside of our main application code. So you don't have to redeploy your application if you want to test a different prompt. Now, another fantastic thing is that you can define retries in Tensor Zero. So for example, here I defined a bunch of neat retries for Claude. This means that it's going to try three times if Claude is the only option before it moves to another fallback. But because I have three different model providers set up for this very function, the actual fallback logic is that it's going to just go to the next variant. So if GPT-40 Mini fails for whatever reason, it's just going to retry with DeepSeq. But for example, I could do something like this where I completely remove these variants and I only have Claude and Mistral. And now what's going to happen is that since the weight on Mistral is zero, it's only going to call Mistral if Claude fails three times. So without me doing any sort of glue code, I have automatic retries. I have configurable fallbacks. I can change all these weights and add as many variants as I want. That's pretty powerful. And the best part is that all of the inference calls are automatically saved to the click house. And now you can actually just spin up the UI that Tensor Zero comes with and inspect all of your inferences. So here's the three that we made. And if you can click, if you click into them, you can see the input, you can see the output. I mean, this is just a very basic example, but it's evident how powerful this is. Episodes are different. You have all your functions listed. You can see how quickly this gets really powerful. But that's just scratching the surface of what Tensor Zero actually provides. And it's actually kind of a genius idea because they just slotted themselves in right at your inference layer. And so much value can be extracted just from that part of your application. And Tensor Zero has a metrics feature where you can define a metric such as this one I have here, year extraction accuracy. Now this one's type Boolean. And what you do is you save the inference ID that you get from every inference, if you like, and give the inference an actual score, whether it was good or bad, or a range. It could be a float, one to 10, or whatever you want. And this way, now you can track the quality of all your inferences over time and query that from your ClickHouse. 
And then you can take that a step further. They have this idea of an episode. And basically, a lot of LLM apps actually have a series of LLM calls for a single function. So maybe you're extracting data from a PDF or some documents, and there's like a pipeline of work that has to happen to get an end result. And in that pipeline, there could be three or four or five different LLM calls that go to different providers, different models, and you can track this metric by using these episode IDs. I mean, you can check out the documentation here. It'll explain it a lot better than I will, but that's kind of the basic idea. And all of this is available for you to query off your ClickHouse. Now, another fantastic little feature that these guys have is inference time optimization. So what you can do is actually have an LLM decide from a bunch of different LLM calls which one is the best without you touching a finger. And this really opens the door to a lot of possibilities within your application. So for example, you get a request and instead of just choosing one of the LLM models, you actually send it to three or four and then have an evaluator, which is another LLM function set up, decide what is the best response here based on the criteria you give it. It's actually pretty genius. And you can see here on their website, it just shows you exactly how to set that up. It's pretty simple. It all goes through this tensor zero config file. Now I've tested this and where most unifying SDKs fail, these guys pass with flying colors. I mean, even the JSON schema stuff, you can use any model, any provider, and it all worked out of the box. I didn't have to tweak anything. You can use batch inference from Claude API. You can use JSON schema from Google. So this tool has really saved me a lot of headaches and overhead in managing different retries, fallback options, figuring out which model is best for which prompt. All of that just went away. Now, obviously, you're going to have to deploy an extra three services or two services. I mean, you don't really need the UI on your production deployment. So there is an overhead on managing the additional services, but the benefits far outweigh the costs. So again, just hit their website. They have a great quick start guide. They also have a thorough comprehensive tutorial that kind of gives you all the details and how to start from scratch. But it was really easy to get started with. One curl command, Docker compose up, change a few of the ports, add your API keys, and done. Overall, this is a fantastic tool. Being able to track all the inferences, have insights over your data, and then being able to actually query all the data above a certain threshold from based on the metrics is going to be very powerful going down the line as your applications mature and you want to increase the accuracy of the results. You want to have insights to how it's performing from an LM standpoint, from a provider standpoint, and it's a brand new tool. So we can expect a lot more features. I'll definitely be going much deeper and using it in our production applications. So let me know what you think. Any comments, any tools that you've seen that do similar things? I'd love to hear about it.